it's a way for me to get platinums and also catch up on my Netflix show. Catch up and, uh, catching up on the Dark Crystal, huh? Uh, no. Age of Resistance. You ought to watch it. It's pretty good. Nope. So, yeah. So in Don't you dare spit on Jim Henson's legacy, you bastard. You are listening to Trophy Horse with your host, Tricky Mick, Alex, I yield to no one, Steve, and Sid. Welcome to Trophy Wars. This is episode 405. Yes, I'm back. I'm your host, Tricky Mick. Alongside with me, the man, the myth, the legend, he's Alex. Apparently, someone doesn't like the funny words and names that I put into the chat. Or the, I should say, the agenda. He brings the awesome every single week, but he deleted the names. It's I yield to no one. See, I thought Tricky did that, so I was sticking it to Tricky by deleting him. So, my bad, Alex. I was, I was over here trying to stick, stick it to Tricky by, uh... By putting some unsavory names that you Shuhei Yoshida would not approve of. Yes, and uh, I, you know, just to switch subjects a little bit, I want to thank you two gentlemen for holding down the fort while I've been taking some time off. Uh, I'm actually still going to take some time off. I'm just back for this week because of the uh, importance of the news that came out on uh, Tuesday. There was some news on Tuesday? I hate you. I have I have a bone to pick about that news, by the way. Do we get into it now? Well, let me ask you a question. Is it related to the topic, or is it just in general? It's just in general. I mean, it, it is related into the topic, and it is in general. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know what you're about to say, but go ahead and do it now. So I, have, I had a really big problem with the fact that it was leaked whether on purpose or not, I'm feeling it was on purpose. That it was leaked that The Last of Us was going to be shown at this state of play. I feel that it was, I feel that it was, in a sense, someone trying to boost the hits for state of play. Well, I mean, that's possible, but I, I wouldn't say that it was leaked as, more, as far as Naughty Dog actually confirmed that it was going to happen. They basically tweeted out, or Facebook post, or however it's social media that you want to call it, uh, every day leading up to the state of play. So they were like, and Neil Druckmann himself said, it's been too long since we talked about it, we're going to talk about it. Well, yeah, but that was after the articles had come out that it's Last of Us 2 is going to be shown at state of play. And then it, they started, you know, teasing all the way up to it. And I'm just like, you know, I, I, I'm more of the, I'm sitting there watching it. Oh wow, we've got Last of Us 2 footage. Holy cow. It it just it took away some of those pizzazz of state of play. I see I I I okay, I've been away from the news a little bit too long. I actually didn't think they started hyping it up until Neil Druckmann said that. If they did anything before Neil Druckmann actually confirmed it, then I'm wrong and I'm sorry, but I thought they started hyping it once Neil Druckmann actually came out and said we're going to talk about it at the state of play because because a message a message came out like maybe a month ago that said we're doing uh we're talking about the last of us at an event on this day. Oh, okay. I just remember seeing something on one of the social media or websites that I was freak zipping around like, you know, the Friday before Thursday before whatever and saw something that said, you know, State of, you know, Last of Us 2 rumored to be shown at State of Play, and it's just like, oh, now, come on. That would have been so cool just to drop that bombshell during State of Play, but. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't feel, Alex, how do you feel about that? Good thoughts. <laughs> Thank you for paying attention so sorry to Sorry, I was reading, reading uh, Discord chats. Hey, look, you know what? It's your fault, Tricky, because you... Tried to get us on Discord for the longest time, and here I am in Discord finally, and I'm just trying to keep up with the news for the day. No, no, I'm trying to get us on Discord. The problem is a certain someone who we won't mention refuses to try to download it. Yield, I think he's talking about you. That's fine. He can he can talk about me all he wants. 
So, but we we are gonna get yield onto Discord so we can actually start recording the the, the shows over Discord. How many months have we been saying that now? Well, it's 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 a matter of me actually sitting down with Yield and explaining to him exactly how Discord works. Because he said it, he said he's downloaded it, he's tried it, he couldn't get it to work. Doesn't work. So I think he just had a few settings wrong, which is what we had the problem with you when you downloaded the app version of Skype on your computer, and it wasn't working. So we had to like talk it through. So anyway, anyway, what are we talking about? Trophy counts. Yes, uh, I'm gonna actually gonna go last because I I've made a huge jump since last time I've been on the show. A huge jump? Is that like huge? Huge. Uh, Alex, go first. What I've been playing hasn't changed much from before. I'm just playing uh, wait, wait, wait. a lot less not, Crash Team Racing as the current Grand Prix winds up, and we get out. Al- Al- Alex, what? we're not talking about what we're playing. We're doing the trophy count. Oh, you are. Thanks for paying attention to the show, sir. I mean, I was ready to go. I was ripper ready to go, so I'm listening. Just you know, <laughs> my mind is in the future. I'm ahead of the game. Alex, your trophy count, sir. Level thirty-one, tro- trophy count of six thousand nine hundred twenty, and a platinum count of one hundred two platinums in one hundred one games. Yield. Yes. I hate you. <laughs> I really. I know you're gonna do it, and you still freaking do it. Oh, you like me to do my trophy count. Well, see, you know, I've been playing some Wreckfest and some level 28, trophy count of 5884, and a platinum count of 91. And the fucked up thing is I know you can see me and you just get the rise out of me. I know. It's awesome. Steve is level 16. He went up a level. He did? Uh, to- yes, he did. Uh, he stole trophies of 2,209 with 11 platinums. Sid is level 39 with a total trophy count of 9,200 and a plaque count of 168. Now, gentlemen, I am prepared for all the comments and accusations you can throw my way, but I am now level 49, up six levels since episode 400. Total trophies of 11,694, up 1,100 trophies since episode 400. And a plat count of 195, which is up 51 Platinums since episode 400. You finally synced your PSP? I did that a long time ago. Uh, so hold on, I where, have... where are all these trophies coming from? Well... Jump, bitty jump, jump! No, well... Yes. You've been, play- hold- you've been playing the dollar games. No, no, no. I've been playing Japanese visual novels. Okay. Now, that is something we're going to have to discuss as far as the Bill of Rights goes, because I don't know if it's chumping, but I will fully admit it is probably a chumpable offense. So hold on, wait. Essentially, are these games, like the Telltale games, that you just play through and you get trophies for? Well, you actually don't control anything. What you do is it's well, basically you watch the game, uh, watch a movie. It, yeah, it's it's a choose your own adventure type thing where you basically read a story and then you make decisions, and then based on your decisions, you go down certain paths. But here's the kicker: it's all in Japanese, so I don't even know the stories. I'm literally just printing out a trophy guide, and then as the decisions come up, I'm choosing. The choices tell me to, and each game takes anywhere from 45 minutes until the one I'm doing currently right now takes 10 hours. Well, at that point, you're not even playing a game anymore, really. No, he's, he, he, he's just padding his trophy count. Yes. That's why I said it, it, it's very chumpable, but I don't know if it's a chumpable offense, because technically I am playing the game. You are. If you're just sitting there with a guide on all these easy games, they're just kind of like, it's essentially the equivalent of sitting back and watching a computer save screen, like a screensaver, like the flying toasters or the moving aquarium from back in the 90s. <laughs> like, if that's the equivalent of your game playing difficulty, you know, every once in a while, if you want to play a game like that, a relaxing game like Flower or something like that, or like a visual novel or something like that, that's fine. But when you're doing it for every game to get all these trophies, I'd say, yeah, that's jumpy. Okay, hold on. 
listeners, you're not going to be able to see this, but uh, Alex and Yield, if you look into your camera, or onto your screen, this is basically the guide that I'm just printing out, and if I get closer, you'll see, uh, how, see how it says one and two? Yeah. Basically, what you do is you choose, like, one, you choose the top answer, two, you choose the second from the top answer, and you just do that. And then it tells you where to make the saves, and you just go through the list. This run right here will probably take me, uh, this is a 10-hour game. This one will probably take me about an hour to go through. <laughs> that looks like you have instructions to build a microwave. <laughs> and if you look, well, they're two-sided, and it takes you a while to Yeah, but why are you printing them out? Why can't you just look at them on your computer? Because I'm sitting on my couch while... See, the, what I'm doing with this is, as I'm doing this, I'm watching Netflix. So I'm catching up on The Ranch. I'm catching up on The Blacklist. I'm catching up on my movies and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I got 51 Platinums since the last time I've ever done this. Okay, show. but here's the thing. Like, would you be proud, like, someone explaining that, hey, I just beat The Last of Us on the hardest difficulty. Hey, I beat um, Shadow of the Colossus, all the time attacks on hard. Would you be, like, somewhat following all of that? Or, like, any difficult games, like challenging games, like someone beating Vanquish and all the tactical challenges, would you be happy, tell, or, like, proud, saying, yeah, so I, uh, playing these Japanese visual novels, and I, I'm, you know, it's a different language, but I'm printing out all these guys and just, you know, picking the option it tells me. Like, would you feel good about yourself sharing that with people who've actually accomplished things in games? Absolutely, because the side I, I forgot game... who I was asking. I expected <laughs> no. you to take a U-turn, but I forgot who I was asking. No. Because uh, the side benefit of this is because of Sony Rewards, every 10 Platinums that I get, I get 1,000 Sony Rewards points. After uh, 5,000 points, I get a free $50 PSN card. So how much money have you spent to get all these Platinums? I have not spent one dime. Really? Correct. They've all been free. They've all been free to me. Oh, okay. Well then, carry on, sir. So, my 50 plats, just my 50 plats alone, has gotten me $50 in PSN credit. That And that and that doesn't add in all the ones that I get for getting the silver trophies and the gold trophies. So, essentially, I would arguably say I've earned about $75 worth of PSN credit during the, doing this. Well, hey, if it's not costing you anything, knock yourself out. Yeah, but at the core, are you having fun with this? Like, is this fun for you? Yes. I'm making money. <laughs> I'm having lots but of But then it's not playing. It's it's like a, a job. Well, the, like the last one I just played, uh, the last platinum I just got, which was like 20 minutes before we start, sat down and record, was Clan Ad. And that entire game was in English. I mean, it's a Japanese visual novel, but they had the option to put all the text into English. So I know that story. But all for I ninety the other fifty plats, I do not know the story to. <laughs> Sounds like time well spent, Tricky. She kicks high. <laughs> uh and I will tell you that you should never play a visual novel around your kids. Well, a Japanese visual novel? Probably not. Because uh, they're... The, this, I, I, got a, I got a funny story to tell you guys. Um, so, today, Sweet Mama D came out of her room, and I was working on the game. And she goes, ooh, an anime. And she, she knows what I've been doing with the guides and everything. She sat down and started playing the game. And she's like, I like this. I'm like, you like to sit there? She goes, yeah, I like anime. Until it got to a scene where I had to go, okay, you have to go to your room. <laughs> Come here, sweet mama D. Tell everybody how you like your anime games. Cowboy Bebop. Excellent. I recommend it. Yield says play Cowboy Bebop. No, watch Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, but can you find Cowboy Bebop anywhere these days? Like, that was like early 2000s, late 90s, right? On Cartoon Network? Oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah, you can find it. All right, let's get let's get back to the show. Okay, back to the show. <coughs> uh, Alex, if you want, to take that all the shower or leave it in. I don't care. I'm gonna leave it in. Yeah, I know. 
All right, so let's get into what we're playing. I'm very simple. I've been playing a shitload of visual novels, but I have dabbled in uh, the division a little bit. And I started God of War 2 on the Vita again. Why? Well, I was working the uh, the UN blockade, and I needed something to play because I finished all the visual novels on my Vitas. So I, I started playing the game. Come to find out, I got halfway through the game and noticed trophies weren't popping. Apparently, the Vita version of God of War 2, if you hit the home button on the Vita, it disables trophies. So I had, so I had to start all over again with that. But ironically, here's the funny thing. I started playing God of War 2 on my birthday this year. Noticed the trophies weren't popping, so I synced up the trophy list. Come to find out, the last time I played that game was five years ago to the day on my birthday. Ooh, spooky. So now I, I have to restart God of War 2 again and play the entire game with never hitting the home button. Or it disables the trophies. Why Why would it do that? Uh, hey, that's a pro trophy tip. I do not know. I didn't even know. Uh, it oh, happened. you didn't know? <laughs> because I actually beat, like, I, I five years ago on my birthday, I actually beat God of War. And God of War 2. And I when I synced up the trophy list, I noticed I only had two trophies. My cat's trying to say hi too. Can you shut up? Thank you. Uh so I was wondering why I didn't get the trophies and I Googled uh why I didn't get the trophies and I found out there's apparently there's a trophy glitch with the Visa version. Awesome. Which I I don't, like, that's a very bad glitch because I don't know anybody that plays a Vita game and never hits the home button to suspend their game before they turn it off. You literally have to power it off on the top, and then when you turn, you have, and if you ever want to play a different game, you have to turn the Vita off entirely and then turn the Vita back on just to be able to pick another game because you cannot hit the home button while the, uh, while the game is open in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, you're right. Because you hit the home, you what? You double tap the home button so you can close the game. Right. Yeah, that is weird. It's up, and it's not not something that will ever be patched because at this point, it's not, they're not worried about the Vita anymore. Yeah, they're not supporting the Vita, so yeah, you have to just deal with this one if you're going to play it on there. Yeah, I mean it's not a big deal. It's like I literally was just trying to. I mean, it does actually sound if you care about trophies like a big deal. It's more of an annoyance. A huge annoyance, because you never know if it actually disabled. Like, if you accidentally hit the home button one time, and then you go through the game, it will disable it. And you have to, like, even if it's disabled, you have to delete the save file and start all over again. So. Uh, and other than that, I'm playing Rock, rock Band, uh, kicking uh, Yield Ass and scores. Whatever. Uh, and uh, that's it. Yield, what have you been playing, sir? So, I've been playing Rock Band 4, and Tricky's nowhere near my scores. Um, Listeners, I will start posting the pictures in the Facebook chat. Whatever, dude. You're, you're just... I'm like number one in every category on Rock Band on guitar. Yeah, okay. Go look! Compared to my friends, compared to my friends you are second. You're behind me. Every stat. Really? Because I'll pull it up right now. Pull it up right now. I'm pulling it up right you now. You pull it up right now. Anyway, so I've been playing Rock Band 4. I've been playing some Wreckfest. I've been playing some Trackmania Turbo. I've been playing some World of Warships Legends. I'm down to four trophies for that Platinum. And I've been playing some Borderlands 3. Fired it up the other night with Homer Get Stuffed in the Brain 76. And we started playing the through co-op. Homer's name is not allowed to be said on the show anymore. Don't be hating. He left the band. He left the band? Well, he didn't say nothing, which is worse. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. All right, Alex, what have you been playing, sir? Pretty simple. Just more Hungry Shark trying to grind my way through all the missions in that game. All 270 of them with all 27 sharks. And, uh, 
just I stopped playing CTR once I got to the top of the gold tier, unlocked all the goodies. Uh, just waiting for the Grand Prix for October to start so I can get me some Embryo and Komodo Mo and Nina Cortex. Really looking forward to that one. But yeah, pretty much just more Hungry Shark and, you know, my usual Pokemon Go obsession. Uh, I I have some, uh, what we're playing DLC. Okay. Because I totally forgot. My mother bought me uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Switch. So I've dabbled in that a little bit. How is that? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> you said you've been you've been dabbling in it, so how is it? I, I dabbled in it for like two seconds. I got to the beach, picked up my sword, and that was the last thing I did. It's the first time I've ever played the game. So, I mean, but basically you ain't played long enough to make a decision. Correct. Okay. All right, where do I go to compare our stats? Well, you can't compare them, but what you do is you can, like, go... What is... Oh, so you're you're in the Rivals Hub, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So, you can go, like, highlight... Uh, I got it. Compare, compare players. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, and what instrument we're going on? Just guitar? Guitar! Alright. Uh, skill. I'm 753, you're 708. So I got that one. So, what? This... So, okay, the stuff ain't sinking, because I checked last night and I had you beat in every category. This uh, song score. You have 3 million... 3.5 million, I have 4.6 million. I have you beat in that. All song score. You have 21 million, I have 28 million. I got you beat on that. Gold stars. I have I have 22, you have 17. I got you beat on that. I got, more gold, full I com- got more gold stars than that. Expert full combos. I have five, you have four. Uh, total star- stars earned. You have 3,200, I have 2,400. That's the only category you ever beat in. Huh. I'll, I'll go downstairs and look. I know I had, go- I had, I had crowns by every one of those. And I am level, I, I, my level is 63, your skill level is 59. Well, yeah, skill level, you're ahead of me for sure. I wasn't arguing that. I'll watch, I'll go downstairs when we're done, I'm going to take screenshots and I'm going to send them to you. Translation, you suck. Whatever. All right, so let's get into what we're uh, actually supposed to be here to talk about, and that's PlayStation news. All right, so our PlayStation Plus games were announced in the state of play, but we're just going to do that in a separate category because that's what we generally do at the last show of the month. Uh, And this lineup, I have to say, is pretty damn good. Sony has announced MLB The Show 19 will be free for PlayStation Plus, and also The Last of Us Remastered. That's pure marketing. More than anything else, that's pure marketing. Now now, now I can try and go for the Platinum. Uh, Last of Us Remastered, obviously I already have. MLB The Show, I'm excited to play. I just never bought one of the show games. Now I can play it and try it out. I can't get excited for baseball if it's not like the arcade, like the Midway Arcade games like Slugfest. If I can't hit a home run into space, then no thank you. You can do a moonshot. To be fair, the MLB The Show games are probably the best baseball games in the industry. Well, it's the only baseball games in the industry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what I said. The best game in the video game industry, as far as baseball goes. <laughs> uh, Yeah, so that was your free PlayStation Plus games. And yeah, Alex, it's definitely marketing for The Last of Us Remastered. Perfect time in for the that announcement. Yeah, because if, if Sony is releasing, or like before the big holiday rush of games, when everyone's going out and buying all these different games for the holidays and stuff, like them getting it into October before November and December is brilliant, because then it gets people, if they beat it this month, or maybe a little bit into the next month, then they can be ready to play The Last of Us Part 2 when it finally comes out. It gives you enough of a break between the remastered version and The Last of Us Part 2 where you're not feeling like you've been just been playing that one game for like six or seven months. All right, so let's get into the state of play. Uh, before we actually go into details, did you both watched it? Yeah. And, 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 I, and I have to... What? It was silence from Alex. I don't know. Alex, <laughs> Come on, Tricky. Don't it? you have faith in me? No, not at all. When it comes to this, good stuff. man. So you did I, not I watch did it. look at the trailers. I did not watch anything on the last part two because I want to go into that game blind. I don't want to know anything. 
Uh, all right. Uh, so, Yield, I, I, I guess I'll pose this question directly to you. Okay, because I did uh, watch it. My wife and I watched it. Uh, this is our third state of play. Yes. Uh, a lot of people are saying that this one wasn't as good as the other two. They're wrong and they're entitled to their opinion. I tend to agree with you saying this is the strongest one. This is and, the strongest one. And I want to say, as a caveat, I'm not saying that just because it had The Last of Us Part 2 in it. And I, I agree with you. The Last of Us Part 2 helped. But to me, we had we had two games that were never announced. They were first looks at games. And they were games that I was like, okay, they, they, they're intriguing. I would like to keep an eye on it. Um, that's what I wanted, to me, that's what I wanted State of Play to be. Was, hey, it was supposed to be like, to me, I thought it was supposed to be like mini E3s. Hey, look, these are games that we're working on. Here's your first look at them. You know, and instead it's just been, hey, look, here's all the, here's everything you already know we've been working on. It It's just, to me, the first two haven't been that good. The second one was all VR. If you're a VR person, it was really good for you. And I'm okay with well, that. I- and, and to be fair, before they did the second state of the play, they came out and said, "This is going to be heavy on the VR." Like they didn't, they didn't like try to shock everybody and say, "Oh, well, we're trying, we're trying to shoehorn this in." They said, "This is about VR. If you don't want to, if you don't care about VR, you might want to skip this one." Now, I, this is what I expected most of the state of place to be. Was here's some games we're working on. Now, granted, I think that it was lacking. In the sense of you had two unannounced games. The big thing was The Last of Us. And then we had filler with, here's what we're doing for PlayStation Plus, And here's what we're doing with uh, a tie-in Death Stranding console. So I could see where people were like, it seemed lacking. But to me, it's what the state of play, what how it was presented to me. Which was... Here's unannounced games. So I thought it was the best one so far. All right. So uh, I will, I'll say that I think that if you're doing one state of play per year, I th- I can understand why people would find this disappointing because like with these, these press conferences, especially if you've only got like one a year, people are expecting surprises. They're expecting like big games and maybe more than just one big game. So I can understand how people would be disappointed if this were like a once a year thing and Sony's not going to E3. But they usually do a state of play in December. They probably won't this year because this one is so close. But do, do they usually do two? Or is it just one? Well, this is the third state of play, and they've all come in 2019. But granted, we went... We we didn't get... We had uh, Sony at E3 last year for 2018. They didn't do a PSX. And they didn't go to E3 this year. So the only PlayStation news that we had outside of a random trailer for the release date for uh, Death Stranding are these three state of plays. Now, the rumor is, is that they're probably going to bring PSX back this year. So in that case, I would say there would not be another state of play this year and that they'll do a formal press conference. But if they don't bring back PSX, I fully expect the fourth state of play. And I think... I think on average, I think on average they should be every three months. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Is it's been about every three months. But I, I'm with you, Tricky. This one was the better of the three. All right, so let's get into it now. To be fair, I'm gonna, basically going to read the whole article from IGN, uh, and it's written by Lucy O'Brien. But I'm not going to read it like all. I'm just going to read the sections of the games and uh, her explanation of each thing. So. You know, I'll read that paragraph, and then we'll talk about it, and then we'll move on. Uh, the first thing they did was show the, uh, the opening trailer for Humanity. It's a video game from Enhance, uh, who is known for Res Infinite and Tetris Effect, and Tokyo-based design studio that uh, uh, limited. And a highlight of this state of play, it looked like it initially looked like you manipulate masses of people in a variety of cute ways, but the fact that it quickly descended into violence was surprisingly in a good way. After all, you're going to name your video game Humanity. I expect some sort of commentary about our collective terribleness when it comes to the way we treat each other. So, Alex, let's go to you. What do you think about Humanity? Well, I love that all the comments on the IGN article, 
were like, what the hell did I just watch? Or at least half of them, were like, didn't understand what the game was about. So, I, I mean, like, overall, I think it looks like some people made, like, associations to Lemmings. To me, it looks like a spatial puzzles, or at least spatial puzzles, sometimes involving other enemy characters, like the violent side of humanity, which you referred to when you were, you know, speaking a little moment ago, Tricky. But to me, it looks like spatial puzzles where you have to get a certain amount of people to the goal because you see um, these uh, humanity going up a ramp into this kind of white light. So I think it's basically going to be a bunch of levels with puzzles in each one that you have to navigate and get a certain amount of people to the end goal, but yet you'll also not only come up against, like, spatial issues, environmental issues, but also, like, enemy characters, like the little red people with, like, little swords and guns and stuff. So, like, that's... I see it as more of, like, a, 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 like a puzzle game, but, like, I also see the social commentary, like you said, where you have a mass of humanity, but then you also have a resistance, which maybe resistance is a good word because they were just straight up murking people. All right, Yield, what are your thoughts? I was kind of like, what the hell did I just watch? I mean, I, I, I agree with Alex. So you were, you were the IGN comments. I am with the IGN comments. Now, I did realize that, yeah, it's it's like what Alex said, you know, you got to get so many people into a goal, and you've got to either circle the enemies to kill them or... Or, you know, vice versa. I got that concept of it. But I was just like, what the hell was all this? So I, that was, sorry. So to backtrack, that was three games. That new games that they announced. But anyway, I was just, it was a game that I could really care less about. It, 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 the, tra- the trailer did nothing to make me go, yeah, I, I want that game. I will say that I love that a lot of, like every game that Sony presented at this state of play looked very different from all the other ones. And this game looks incredibly different from anything else they showed off. So I like the diversity in the games that they're focusing on. All right, I, I mean, I, I'm kind of a mixture between both of you. Like, I'm, I'm interested, but again, nothing in that trailer really said this was a must-buy for me. But, you know, I'll keep an eye on it, and, you know, maybe it'll, something will change. Uh, the next thing, uh, which none of us have an interest in, but we got to report it a little bit, the trailer for the Call of Duty Modern, War- Modern Warfare's new campaign was another highlight. Looking more like a Hollywood political thriller, CIA on foreign soil, than we have ever seen from a COD game before. This was visually an utter standout. Beard's price was worth the price alone. It had a really strong showing for Modern Warfare's new campaign with the potential to draw many players back to the series who left it years ago as a single player's offense took a back seat. Now, uh, this doesn't say it in the article, but I've also read that there are a lot of people pissed off that there is a multiplayer mode that's coming to the PlayStation 4 that has a one-year exclusivity and will not go to any other uh, system or console. And a lot of people are pissed off about that. So, uh, what I'm going to ask you, gentlemen, is not necessarily about Call of Duty, but knowing that Call of du- this Call of Duty will be cross-console play, do people have a right to be pissed off at the fact that for one year, PlayStation 4 people are going to be able to play this and they're not going to be able to play with other people on the systems? Well, is it just going to lock them out of playing certain content with each other or is it going to lock it out completely? It's gonna, Well, it's not even going to be available on the other systems. Like they uh, on Xbox and on PC, this mode is not even going to be in their game at all. This is only going to be on PlayStation 4 for a period of one year. Yeah, so I mean, I assume they the exact can, like, outside that mode, you can play with other people on, like, say, Xbox or PC, but with if someone on the PlayStation is using that mode, then it's going to block them out from playing with anybody else. Correct. Yeah, I mean, as long as they can still play together, it's fine, but if this is kind of like Sony's like, hey, cross-play, but yet we still want to get a leg up on you and have this... Is, like, and this is kind of something always like they've always done is, whether it be Microsoft or Sony, it seems like the Call of Duty games, they've always looked to cut some kind of exclusivity, exclusivity deal with Activision to try to get some kind of DLC for their platform for a limited amount of time. And I get it, it's a popular game series. But at the same time, I'm like, can't you guys think of more creative ways to get around it? Like, like you guys have your own exclusive, you have your own own studios, you have your own own content. Why does everything have to go through Call of Duty? All right, uh, I, I just found the original story. Call of Duty's Modern Warfare Spec Ops Survival Mode is a time PlayStation 4 exclusive Activision has revealed. 
This mode teased in the uh, in the PlayStation version of the Modern Warfare's new campaign trailer is exclusive to the PlayStation 4 until October 1st, 2020. Confirmation comes in the small print at the video at the 2 minute and 17 minute mark. Uh, and then Activision has responded, and I'm reading this live, so I, like, please bear with me. Uh, Infinity Ward's narrative director has responded to complaints over Call of Duty's Modern Warfare PlayStation 4 time exclusive for the survival mode of Spec Ops, pointing to, quote, decisions that are above all of our pay grades, end quote. Developer Infinity Ward has been caught in the fire line after it revealed survival mode is exclusive to the PlayStation 4 until October 1st, 2020. Deals for the content to be used as the time exclusive are usually done by publishers and platform holders, and it's Activision's deal with Sony for Modern Warfare that sparked the current Call of Duty outcry. Responding to the Call of Duty uh, fans on Twitter, uh, insist- Inf- Infinity Ward insisted was simply trying to create a best Call of Duty game it could and downplayed the significance of survival mode's exclusivity. They said, quote, we do our very best to give our players the best experience possible, end quote. These are decisions that are above our pay grades and that have to be considered. I understand your feelings, but this is much better than others I've seen, end quote. So this one mode, the Spec Ops Survival, is exclusive to PlayStation 4. And there's people pissed off, and including PlayStation 4 people, saying that if, be, if they are able to play with Xbox and PC players, they should be able to play this mode. That they should not have locked this mode for one year. Yield. I know you don't call about Call of Duty, but this is going back into the whole cross-platform play. I think it's kind of... I understand for the exclusivity, but for a whole year, by then, you know, people move on. So now, then when the Xbox people get it and PC, the PlayStation people will probably move on to something else. Well, yeah. Won't they release another game the next year? Like a new Call of Duty game? Well, that's that's that was the point I was about to make. Is it's a one year exclusive, so by the time Xbox people are able to play this mode, the next Call of Duty game is going to be out. Yeah. So I I think it's I think it's it's crappy, and everybody has a right to complain about that. All right. All right. Moving on. Uh, although it it went on for a mite too long in a kind of quick hit format. Wantum's trailer was delightful. No, it wasn't. Wantum was. Wantum was first announced in 2015, yet we only received a release date in December of this year. It's unusual to have that information so close to release, but this is another reminder from PlayStation that there are still, quote, exclusives, in this case, shared with PC, left before year end. I had no interest in this at all. Uh, Neither did I, and I forgot, so that, oh, well, that one was already said announced, so to me it was new, but, no, I didn't. I watched that, and I'm just like, what did I just watch? Alice, you care about Wantum at all? I'm with you guys. We're all sailing on the same ship here. All right, next story. The final real surprise, all but a small, delicate one in the state of play, was a trailer for Arise, a simple story. Arise looks quiet and me- meti- uh, me- meditative. There you go. Hold on. You make fun of Yield and the way he says things on the show, and then here you go. You can't even say meditative. I just could. I, I was trying to say medieval for some reason. Uh, in the vein of Journey or Flower, as your character upon death revisits the highs and lows of the, in the life he lived. This appears to be a passion project from the new st- studio Piccolo, who all quit their jobs in advertising to pursue a passion for video game development like the mad people they are. That looked that looked interesting. I liked it. I mean, j- just from when it, it would go kind of sight, not really sight scrolling, but you know, it, it would go top down in some spots and you had your kind of like puzzle solving in a sense of how you had to get from A to B. And I, I, that game looked interesting to me. Yeah. It's a really pretty game and I love the art style and it reminds me, they mentioned journey in there, but it also reminds me of of like a game in like the feel of the game, the look of game of Abzu, which is also done, was done by giant squid, which I believe were people who actually broke away from, um, I can't think of the, um, the studio that did journey and flower. Help me out here. I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. Yeah. I never played it. It was the studio. Genova Chen was part of the studio. Good God. Help me out. Oh, but wow. no, the game uh, The game looks really good, and I I, I definitely, it's it's caught my attention. I will probably play it. It looks, um, I'm, I'm Googling it right now. Well, I just looked up Journey Studio, and it's bringing up Journey Studio albums. Um, that's, looking at uh, lyrics for Wheel in the Sky is not going to help me out here. 
Uh, it just that keeps game turning. Company. That game company, that's who it was. Yeah, so I think, uh, I believe Giant Squid was an offshoot of that game company. But, you know, let's let's give credit here. Like, Arise is probably, while there weren't, like, a bunch of huge announcements, this is a nice, smaller surprise that I think many people can be happy with. Yes. Uh, that game company, according to Wikipedia, is uh, responsible for Flow, Flower of Journey, and Sky Children of the Light. And the last one came out only to iOS. There you have it. That explains why I've never heard of it. That explains All it. right. Okay, wait! wait, wait. So, no! Oh, oh, so, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There, there was another game announced, at least, or it was showcased, that wasn't mentioned in the article. Okay, I was going to get to that in a minute, but all right, sorry. You can do, you can, go ahead. You can go now. No, right, no, now. You okay. go now. So you that, go now. That game was called After Party, which I thought looked cool. My wife was like, "That looks dumb." I thought it looked fun in in a dumb way. So what do you? I mean, you got Alex saw the trailer. What do you think of it? Alex, oh, I'm sorry. What, trailer for what? Sorry, I was looking up uh, information on Jod Squid. After Party. <laughs> Oh, I didn't watch that trailer. The... You didn't watch that trailer? Tricky? That was the one... I... See, that seems interesting, but see, to me... I don't know, like, when I look at games like that, I I get turned off. Really? You, the... you, were just, you, you get turned off that, but you're sitting there playing Japanese now. Just... Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me explain. Something about that art style turns me off of games. The story could be as compelling as hell, but for some reason, it just turns me off. Like, I'm interested in the game, but it's just, I got no hype for it. Okay. That, that's okay, because I'm, like, not overly hyped for it. I'm just like, that looks like that's just some dumb fun. And I know it looks like it's just going to be a bunch of quick time events. Which is fine with me. Because, you know, you're sitting there drinking... You know, party games, drinking games against uh, Satan's family. But it, it just, it looked interesting. You know what game I'm waiting for? This is not, it wasn't mentioned in the state of play. What's that? Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was called 12 Minutes. I don't think I've seen a trailer for that. I think it was at E3. It was the game where... You keep replaying the same twelve minutes over and over again, like and you Groundhog have to solve and you have to solve the crime within that twelve minutes. Otherwise, the game resets. It says Xbox though. Yeah, it's coming up for Xbox and PC. Oh well, fooey. Uh, it will eventually come to PlayStation because it does. It says it says it will initially be released on Xbox and PC. Oh, okay. Stuck in a time loop. That's kind of cool. That's that kind. See that kind of game. Like even though it's kind of like the same art style, it, I'm very interested in it. But you could care. You could care less about after party. Eh, whatever. It, it's not that I don't care less. It's just I can't get hyped for it. I don't know. All right, getting back to state of play. Uh, some other notes. Uh, there has been a disc trade in PlayStation Four Pro bundle. Gotta admit, the the system itself does not look good, but that controller was hot as shit. That was my thought exactly. I'm like, I could care less about the controller, but the gold see-through controller is pretty sweet. You, well, you said you could care less about the controller. You meant the Oh, console. sorry. I could care less about the console, but the gold see-through controller, that was pretty sweet. All right. And then uh, also was announced the PlayStation Plus lineup, which we already talked about. Then they went into a uh, VR scissor reel. Uh, If you're interested in checking that out, go check that out. A bunch of games that were not mentioned in this article. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. The Last of Us 2, Last of Us Part 2 footage. Clocking in in about three minutes, the trailer showed us more of Ellie's revenge arc. um, And a couple new enemy types and some goosebump inducing reveals. I don't know about goosebump inducing reveals. Uh well, I, I'm trying not to say because uh uh Alex said he did not want it to be spoiled at all. Oh, okay. I thought you were reading from the story. I was disagreeing with the author. 
Well, no, I'm reading the story. Okay, I disagree I, with I, the author. I just didn't read the last two words. Okay. You know, I have to say, before you go any farther, that up until I watched the trailer, I was kind of, I don't care about The Last of Us 2. <laughs> really? I was, because for the fact that it, it has been so long since we've seen every, anything, it's almost... And, and and it's a bad comparison. It's almost Duke Nukem Forever to me. It's coming. We we're serious. We showed you a trailer like a year ago. We're still doing something. I was just kind of like, I don't care. Well, to be fair, the very first thing we saw was the trailer of Ellie singing sitting on the bed. Yeah. And Sean Layden came out and said, "We're just showing it to you. This game is a very early alpha." And then we saw the trailer at the the last E three they were at, which was the very which was a year later. Yeah, we no ain't seen no nothing. no no sorry no 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 we saw the next trailer at Paris Games Week later that year. Okay, and then that was and it. That was, no, then we had a third one. What was the third one? Oh, that showed some of the stealth and when you the, get the actual get, gameplay when you get shot, it actually. You have to... Yeah, okay. Okay, sorry. So that was... The, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. And then this was the fourth thing we This was the it. fourth thing. But it's been over a year since we've last seen something. Uh, yeah, the, uh, Neil Druckmann said it was been a year and a half. Yeah, so you see, you can understand what I'm th- where I'm coming from, where I'm just kind of like... Ah. But then the, tra- the trailer pulled me back in. I was like, alright, let's do this. Yeah, but see, like Alex, it's good it went away for so long. We didn't, we, you know, we didn't have to do anything. Like, we like we know it's coming. We're just waiting for it. The last trailer we saw was at E3 2018. When they, when somebody did that press conference where they only talked about four games, which were Ghost of Tsushima, Death Stranding. But Spider-Man. Did they do Spider-Man? I no, saw I it. They didn't talk about Spider-Man again? I think, I think they... I think they did The Last of Us, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima, Death Stranding, and they did one. They only talked about four games, and they went into in-depth at all. What, what was the fourth game? Uh, Alex, do you remember? I do not, know. Was it Days Gone? No, I don't think it was Days Gone. Uh, everything showed, somebody showed at E3. Here we go. Uh, oh, it was Spider Man. Sorry, you were right. They talked about The Last of Us 2, Spider Man, Ghost of Tsushima, and Death Stranding. I apologize, you were right. You old. Woo! I thought, I had, for some reason, I thought Spider Man had been out by then. All right, so, I mean, man, did this trailer, like, get me hype. It It, it was good. And then they officially announced the release date. They did. February 21st, 2020. And then they announced all the special editions. They did. Do you have any idea which one I bought, Yield? Oh, you're buying the 230. You're buying the Ellie one. You're buying the Golden Hovercraft edition of the Last of Us Part, Last of Us Part 2 Collector's Edition. See, I'm, try- I'm trying to make it sound in my head that a, a patch... A record and a backpack are worth seventy bucks. Well, the backpack alone is worth fifty. Is it? I mean, is it like a big backpack or is it one of them small backpacks? No, it's a, it's a normal size backpack. Which, if you, I mean, if you had kids, you would know when you go to the store and buy a backpack for your kid, it's like forty, fifty bucks. Um, uh, but I didn't get one Ellie edition. I got three. Three? What the heck? Four? Well, clearly he's looking to sell some or keep them boxed in mint condition. I'm planning to keep one boxed, have one as a backup, and open one. One as a backup and open one. Well, now I know who to go to if I can't get a hold of one. If I decide I want one, I'll just be like... They're already all sold out. Oh, they are? Okay, well, I'll see. I, I got one from Amazon, one from Best Buy, and one from GameStop. Well, GameStop will have... They'll, they'll all have them again. Well, if that's if they're still in business, even Amazon and Best Buy will have them again. And but 
I mean, okay, all jokes aside, the reason I got three of them is because if somehow one of them gets canceled, I want to make sure I had a backup. That's fine. Like I said, if I decide to get one, I know who I can buy one off of. Yo! Well, well, once I have one in hand, I'm canceling the other two. Well, I guess I'll make up my decision before you get one in hand. That way I can be like, well, just hold on to the other one. And... Uh, okay, so let's get into all the different versions. Okay, different versions. Uh, the Ellie Edition, priced at $250, includes the game, full game, which we didn't mention, is two discs. Two. Uh, the, a 12-inch Ellie statue, plus a real backpack designed to look like Ellie's in-game backpack. There's also an Amray case, a steel bookcase, premium packaging, 48-page mini art book, Ellie's bracelet, a logo patch, a lithograph art print, and a thank you letter, and a 7-inch vinyl record featuring music from the soundtrack, 5 stickers, and 6 enamel pins. For the collector's edition, which is $160, uh, it includes the full game, 12-inch Ellie statue of the character playing the guitar, an Amorite case, a steelbook case, premium packaging, 48-page mini art book, Ellie's bracelet, six pins, four stickers, and an avatar set, and a digital soundtrack, and a digital art book, and access to the making of documentary. And a partridge in a pear tree. The special edition, which is $80, includes the full game, a 48-page uh, mini art book, a steelbook case, and a digital avatar set, and a dynamic PlayStation 4 theme. And then, of course, there is just the normal version. Boy, really, to sell that normal version, sound like really despotic there. I got that. You got that normal version. Uh, well, it's, it's you know, I mean, if you're gonna just the game go all out, yeah, sixty bucks. Uh, if you order pre-order any of the editions, you're going to get an in-game ammo capacity upgrade and craft and training man- craft and training manual. If you order the digital version, pre-order the digital version of the game, you'll instantly receive a PlayStation avatar featuring Ellie's tattoo. Now, this is good news to my ears and yield ears. Uh, oh, you gonna leave me two... out? Like I don't like just single player. Well, you you well okay. I, to be fair, you had responded saying if you were for this or against this. Uh, the Last of Us Two multiplayer is not happening. But will return in the future in some form. That's fine. Woo woo! No multiplayer for the game! Naughty Dog put out an official statement on their Twitter stating, quote, We want to address multiplayer in The Last of Us Part 2. As we've stated, the single player campaign is far and away the most ambitious project Naughty Dog has ever undertaken. Likewise, as the development began on the evolution of our fashions mode from The Last of Us Part 1, the vision of the team grew beyond an additional mode that could be included with our enormous single-player campaign. Wanting to support both visions, we made the difficult choice that The Last of Us Part 2 would not include an online mode. However, you will eventually experience the fruits of the team's online ambition, but not as part of The Last of Us Part 2. When and where it will be realized is still to be determined, but the rest assured, we are a big fan of fashions as the rest of our community and are excited to share more when it's ready. So, no online and no multiplayer for The Last of Us Part 2. Yes! Now, the speculation is, is that this could be uh, Sony's first games as a service in which uh, they move the multiplayer to its own game and it's an ongoing service a la Destiny, The Division, and Anthem. That's fine. I, 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 If I want to be a part of it, I can buy in. Alex, your thoughts, sir? I mean, so what your 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 idea is, the the theory is that it's, they're eventually going to move, like you said, to a, a subscription-based service where you're paying something every month to play multiplayer content. No, no, no. No, no, not, not like an MMO. A game... Game as a service means it's it's a okay the, the way the division works you buy sixty dollars for the game and then you can play the game for the the end of time for free they will there will be microtransactions involved but you don't have to buy them but they'll keep adding content on free until whenever they stop supporting the game well essentially that's rocket league games as a service 
Right, but Rocket League charges you for new stages, don't they? No, they don't. You don't. You pay like there's some cars that you have to pay for, but new content like new stages and new game modes typically have been put through free patches. And you and like a lot of the stuff, like the co- customizable stuff you can put on cars, you can earn that through free like in-game um, currency, like like the tapes, the cassette tapes, like this from Radical Summer that you earn by playing the game. You don't have to put any money into it. Yeah, then then uh, Rocket League would be considered a game as a service. That so basically that's what they're talking about. That's the rumor. I mean, Naughty Dog didn't confirm this. Just to be clear. But that's the thought, is that uh, there's going to be a, a, a multiplayer Last of Us that's going to be done as a games and service. No, that's that's fine. I just don't have to buy into it. And d- did you guys know uh, that the Outbreak Day is actually the same day as my birthday? I did not. See, what turned me off with with the first Last of Us... Okay. Mo- multiplayer, which you had to win 80 games to get the trophy. On each side. On each side. So that's 100. Oh, wait, no. no, no. Wait, was it 40 on each side or was it 80 on each side? It was 40 or 80. Either way, it was an incredible amount because you had to pick a challenge that you had to do that could affect how many survivors you lost. Right, but that w- but you didn't have to but you didn't have to win 40 games. You just had to play 40 games, correct? No, you had to win. Basically, you couldn't lose all all of your people. And eventually there's a challenge where you could lose all of your people. Right, but I'm saying is you didn't have to actually win the online match. You just had to win whatever the stipulation is for that match. Yes. True. But still, you 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 screw up. And you got to start over. Yeah. And that just turned me off. I didn't want to get to 39 or 79 and, oh, I didn't make it. And then I got to start all over. And it was just like, no. That, and at the time, my internet wasn't that cooperative with Naughty Dog Games. And I never gave it a whirl on my better internet. And then now the server's closed. All right. It's also worth noting that The Last of Us uh, Part Two is not an open world game either. A lot of people think it's an open world game. It is not. It follows a linear story. Uh and the other controversy. Uh, people are getting involved because of the trailer. Now, Alice, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but it's not really a spoiler. Uh, they have announced that the people that you're going to be fighting are going to be using dogs to track you. And the only way to stop the dog from tracking you is to obviously kill it. So there are people that are mad because Naughty Dog put in dogs in their game and they're claiming animal cruelty. I mean, there there have been other games where you killed... I mean, maybe there were zombie dogs or something like that, but there were other games where you, like, attacked other animals, like dogs or, you know, other domesticated animals. Well, uh, Red Snake Dead, Eater, Red, Red Dead, Metal, you shoot dogs. And Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, you actually kill dogs, too. But there, I'm, I'm just telling you the controversy. I'm not saying they're right. I, 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 I saw an article that said something about, said about you'll have to kill dogs in The Last of Us 2, and you'll have to kill a lot of them. And I'm just like, okay, what, what is your, I didn't read the article. So I was just speculating. I'm like, what, is your lot two dogs? I mean, if you got to kill like 50 dogs, yeah, that'd be good, kind of monotonous and a little overkill. Well, the way the way they showed it is, do you remember, um, uh, I, I forget the mode they called it, but the listening mode in The Last of Us? Remember how you could hear people through the walls and stuff like that and you can locate them? Okay. Uh, in this game, when you go into that mode, you will notice that there is a line behind you. And if the dog picks up the scent on that line, the dog will follow the line to you, eventually find you, unless you somehow kill the dog before it does. I wonder if you could also lose your scent. Well, they said there are ways to lose your scent, but it's not as ho- it's not as easy as just, like, duck it into the grass or something like that, because obviously the dog... Well, of it. course not. You'd have to run into the water or get into something that is more 
stinks, more to speak, more than uh, hides your scent. Yeah, I get that. But they said that the most common way to get the dog to stop following you is, is to, to shoot it or kill it. To, right, is to kill it. Well, yeah, that's just going to be the easier way to do it, or the easiest or quickest way to do it. Um, I I don't know if you guys ever saw it because I recently just saw it myself. There was a documentary for the making of The Last of Us, the first one, in which a lot of people, were, uh, Neil Druckmann was talking about how a lot of people were talking about the violence in the world and how they were approached to tone down the violence. Because even with The Last of Us 2 trailers, especially the second one, where the woman was uh, hanging from the tree and had the knife to her gut, um, that, that was overly violent. Remember, we even had that conversation on the show. And Neil Druckmann said, yeah, but the reason we didn't tone down the violence is because we're trying to tell a story about how desperate these people are. And they're not just going to walk around and hit everybody with pillowcases. Stop it! I didn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm desensitized. I didn't think it was too violent. I figured. I, I thought that that's the way people would act in that situation in this world. Well, they were just they 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 were making the remark that it's overly violent. Obviously, the world is going to be violent. But even like in the third trailer, um, they cut a guy's stomach open and his guts fell out. They were saying it's just overly violent. For The Last of Us 2. I don't feel like it's violent for the sake of violence, like something like Hostel, a movie like series like Hostel, or Saw. But I think that what Druckmann said about them showing and like showing you how desperate people are, how dire the situation is, and how dead, really, the world is, I think that to that degree, some level of violence is, you can... Um, make uh is, ju is justified yeah justified now should you be able to like mow people down with like assault rifles probably not no that's over the top but some level of violence is expected in what would we would call a post-apocalyptic world i mean shit look at rage yeah all right so gentlemen that is going to bring us to the end of the show uh let's do some housekeeping and clean this shit up Alex, how happy are you back that I'm here to do this this week? I really don't like taking one giant breath and then, like, sputting, sputtering out a bunch of words as I, like, intermittently breathe through my nose to try to make it through enough, like, of 20 minutes of talking. <laughs> uh, Proofagame.com is looking for some writers, podcasters, video editors, news, supporters, and generalized help on the site. If you're just simply go to Proofagame.com, click on the Help Watch app, and fill out the application, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. While you're there, be sure to check out all the articles and all the videos. Speaking of videos, they can be found on YouTube by doing a search for official Proven Gamer. You can also catch me streaming on Twitch.tv backslash Proven Gamer, although I have not streamed for like a month and a half. And that's Shame because, on you! Well, in my defense, which is not really a good defense, uh, my PVR died. And it wasn't until I started running the wires to find out that my cat chewed through the wire. So it didn't actually die. The wire just didn't connect. But I got it fixed, and I will be streaming again. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us, there are several ways to get a hold of us. The first one is our phone number. Yield, what is that non-sex line phone number that you like to call? 330-PROVEN-9. 330 you can also send us an email to the Troy Memorial email, trophyhorrors at provengamer.com. If you want to get a hold of us on Twitter, there are several ways. You can contact the site at provengamer, contact the show at trophyhorrors, contact me at Tricky Mick, contact Yield at I Yield to No One, contact Alex at Saundersaurus Rex, contact Steven at Batchild27, and you can contact Russell Elgin. I don't think the dog has a Twitter. It was the dog. I think it was the cat jumping from high height. I also don't think the cat has one either. At least, if you're making a Twitter account for the cat, you better make one for the dog, too. Okay, found out the culprit. It was actually the goddess, and her uh, her Twitter handle is at the goddess. I wonder how many how much she had to pay to get that one. I just turned around and she said, no, it was me. So, I just keep it going. Uh, if you listen to this podcast, we greatly appreciate it. Be sure to listen to our other podcasts. PG Spoilers, which is not the flag show of fucking Proven Gamer, Flagship Darryl. show starring Resident Daryl. Oh my god, why do you encourage him? He's like your uh, arch Nintendo nemesis Duel at this point, so fan the flames. He's so, he's so, he's 21 Platinums behind me. 
That's what you think. I I know for a fact. I checked his trophies. Uh, Nintendo Dual Screens. Steven and Andy do a good job over there. And GameStop, which is Clyde, Joe, and Roberto. See, here's the thing. You guys... On one episode of the show, you gave, you shouted out to Joe and Clyde, but you didn't show out to, shout out to Roberto. So, I, did, I just, I, I, admittedly, I don't listen to game stuff. I also don't listen to Trophy Whores either. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't listen to any podcast. <laughs> but, here's the thing. Like, all these times on the show, I've been saying Joe and Kali and not including Roberto, and now I feel really bad about it, because I've been like, wait a minute, is Roberto still on there too? And I just haven't been giving any credit to Roberto. Well, to be fair, and I love you, Kali, but I haven't listened to game stuff in a while either. Apparently, Matt was also on the show, but Matt left, and Joe came back. But Roberto's been there the entire time. All the podcasts can be found on Apple Podcasts, follow me on iTunes, Stitcher, your various podcast applications on your smart devices, Google Play, tune in, and you can listen to Trophy Horse on iHeartRadio and Spotify. And one other thing you guys have failed, you guys haven't mentioned. Where else can people listen to Trophy Horse now, guys? Pandora? There you go. Well, I didn't know. You told it last time that you told us when it was approved, you told us not to share it. And then I mentioned it on Fireside Chats and you guys didn't mention yeah, well, do it. Well, why do you that. think we would listen to that? I also posted it in the Facebook group. Excuses, excuses. Yes, I did. The same day the show came out. I must have missed that. I must have not read another thing that you wrote. You don't read half the things I write. Uh, PlayStation 4 Communities is one for the site, Proving Gamer. There's one for the show, T-Dubs Brothel. And there's Yield's group, the Platinum Guild, which Yield, uh, at this point, do you want me to post all 51 pictures? That's up to you. Are you going to read them all, or are you just going to go... No! You're going to have no idea what the name of the game is. That's fine. I can just make it up, or just be like, Tricky did a bunch of Japanese uh, visual novels. I'll, I'll save you the time. Just remember to mention it. I'm I'm not gonna go and get 51 pictures and post them there. Your 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 play your notifications next time you turn on your PlayStation is just gonna keep going for the, like an hour. Ding 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 ding. Um. Yeah. Uh, if you listen yeah. to this on, that sounded really weird. Uh, if you are listening to us on one of those things, please go leave us a review. Um, it helps. Our sponsors. First one is Humble Bundle. Alice, tell us about Humble Bundle as I look up what's available on Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle is a charity initiative that every month they bundle together digital media, um, books, all this different content for you to absorb at a reduced price. So basically, if you want to go look at some of the video game bundles, they will uh, give you, it's basically tiered for each bundle, so the amount of money you pay will equate to how many games you get. The more you pay, the more games you'll get. But, you know, you can always name a price slower and get part of the content. Uh, it is done for charity, though, so the more money you can give, the better. And you generally get a value of over $200 worth of games, and you may have to pay $20. So, uh, the more, you, like I said, the more you can give, the better. Uh, you can go to homebow.com to see what they're offering this month, and you can even sign up there for their electronic newsletter to keep up with everything that they are dishing out. All right, so uh, I'm looking up the bundle right now, the games bundle. Um, these are all Steam games. Uh, for one dollar, you're gonna be able to get Concrete Jungle, which I heard was very good, Tricky Towers, which is a very good game, and then the game that I think Yield is gonna chuckle at when I mention When Ski Lifts Go Wrong. When Ski Lifts Go Wrong. That sounds like that could be fun. <laughs> that definitely sounds like <laughs> something in the Lemmings universe. Uh, for three for an average of three dollars and sixty four cents. You're going to get those three games, plus Portal Knights, Brig- Bridge Constructor Portal, which is a very fun game, by the way. Long. Uh, no, no, it's a very fun game. Why, wow, you played the Yield? No. That's uh, very good. Uh, and uh, I don't know how to say it. Seum? S-E-U-M. Seum? I don't know. Uh, anyway, Seum, uh, Speedrunners from Hell. And if you pay $10 or more, you're going to get all that plus Stackle. Gesundheit. tight. Thank you. Uh, yield. Yo. We are a little over a month away. Tell us about Extra Life. So, Extra Life is a 
24 hour video game charity event. It's on November 2nd this year, so technically it's 25 hours because the state like savings time ends. So, what you do is you go to extra-life.org, you sign up for yourself, you sign up for a team, Proven Gamer has a team, you could join our team, or you could create your own team. And then what you do is you go and you get family members, friends, co-workers, neighbors, little old ladies, whoever, to donate monies to you. And 100% of the monies that you earn goes to the Children's Marital Network Hospital of your choosing. So you help kids and you get to play video games. It's a win-win situation. All right. And we also have our Patreon, patreon.com backslash proof of gamer. Um, I have upda- started updating the tiers, so you can go check those out. Uh, we got some perks in there. Uh, I'm going to go into detail once it's officially uh, fully launched. Uh, we got some nice perks in there. Uh, YouTube versions of the game. A mobile app for Proving Gamer. Free to everybody. Maybe that's an idea. Looking for feedback from YouTube, gentlemen? Well, is that what that was? People love their mobile apps these days, I'll tell you that. Uh, through the mobile app, you're actually going to be able to get all the up, all the podcasts, all of the articles, all of our videos, all in one spot. Plus our Twitters, our social medias, and all that stuff. Uh, and our last sponsor, Amazon. If you could or could and would each time you do your shopping on Amazon, stop by Proving Gamer first. Click on any Amazon link and continue normal shopping. Doesn't cost you anything extra and does help out the site tremendously. And if you're Amazon Prime, that also means you're Twitch Prime. If you could uh, go back to what we were talking about with Twitch, twitch.tv backslash Proving Gamer, and you can sub for free, which I gotta tell the goddess to do because she keeps forgetting. For some reason, we both have Prime accounts. Or does she? She's mumbling over something over there. I don't know what she's saying because I have headphones on. Oh, she said, I'm a, I'm an asshole and a malaka. Yo, do you know what a malaka is? No, because it's Greek. Yes, it's jerk off. That's, that's a shout out to you there, Andy. I, I, I don't even speak English well, so what makes you think I would be bilingual? Uh, well, I'm not bilingual either, but the ironic thing is as you're playing uh, the new Assassin's Creed games, Origins and Odyssey, they tend to call you Malaka a lot. So, playing the game, every time the game says Malaka, you hear uh, the goddess from the other room. That's right, he is! That's her right. Man, I can't get no jokes. I can't get no laughter at you two gentlemen. I didn't even hear what you said. All I heard was, that was, yeah, yeah! She yells from the other side of the room that he, that's right, he is. Oh, that's right, he is. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an audio, you malaka. Oh, what, I can't get any laughs either? I'm, no, 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 I'm just thinking, like, how awesome that is going to be to clip that out and put that out as on my uh, live streams. That's me, it's a Luigi, come to my mansion. That game's coming out October 31st. That's that's a real hot drop right there. We're playing that haunted hotel, cleaning up them ghosts. That's that's one game I could care less about. Who you gonna call, Alex? Luigi! Uh, let's go out to show some shout-outs. You'll go first. Me? Yes. Okay. Couldn't be. Anyway. So, I give a shout-out to you, the pimps and the madams of the whoredom. Thank you for down and listening and interacting with us on the shows and on the systems and on the medias and entertaining Daryl with his makeshift flagship. Uh, shout out to Tricky for finally deciding to show up for podcast practice. I mean, it's been a while. It's been a while. As the kids would say, it's been a minute. It, it's, it's been a minute. Maybe or, five. Or, Maybe five or, minutes. Or, uh, ah, oh, crap. I forget how that how that back in the day back in the day back in the day five minutes ago when i burned my hand on a hot pocket you guys you guys do realize that that's what i named last week's show what back yeah because now yes. that episode is back in the day it's yeah. retro uh, uh, it's right yeah uh, according to people on the internet anyway. sell copies of that audio on ebay for a retro fee of ten dollars a shout out to alex for recording tonight. All right, hold on. Before you continue with your shout-outs, did I tell you guys the story of back in the day? My back in the day story? I'm sure you have many back in the day stories. 
I was coming home from work one night and I stopped at back the, in the day. local seven I stopped at the local seven eleven. When I pulled up to the seven eleven, I I had Crazy Train on the radio and I was blasting the shit out of it. I get out of the car, you know, I locked it up, go out of the car, walking in the seven eleven, and this kid goes, Hey, was that Ozzy? And I said, Yeah, it was. He goes, Man, post Malone's gonna make him famous. Yeah, I remember your post on Facebook about that. Yeah. I wanted to smack the kid. Okay. We don't promote violence here on Trumpy Horrors, especially towards dogs and other people. I, I, I can't get a reaction out of you two gentlemen. You'll continue with your shout-outs. Uh, he derailed me, so I'm, uh, that's it. I'm done. Alex, your shout-outs. Give a shout out to the listeners, the fuel to the fire of this trophy horse. Thank you all very much for joining us every week, spending some time with us. Uh, without your continued support, we would not be on iHeartRadio, we would not be on Spotify, we would not be on Pandora. So thank you for continuing to push Trophy Horse to even greater heights. Uh, give a shout out to Yield and Tricky for joining me on this lovely Sunday evening. Shout out to Steven for including his, or uh, upping his trophy count. Also, I want to give a shout out to, uh, to the Game of Rise. Looked uh, from the state of play. Definitely a really interesting game. Love the art style, like I said, and one to watch, if you ask me. And give a couple shout outs to some of the writers. Uh, we, you know, some of the stories we shared tonight were from IGN. Give a shout out to the Matt Kim and Lucy O'Brien, two of the writers responsible for those. And last but not least, I want to give a shout out to my awesome girlfriend, Ashley, who is very happy with her brand new Appa Pop. She loves Avatar the Last Airbender, and her favorite character is Appa, so I decided to. Oh. Huh? You got her a pop of Appa. Yeah, I got her That's... a pop of Appa. A papa. I got you. Uh, so, I love you, honey, and uh, last shout-out goes to you. All right, and I want to give a shout-out to the listeners. Uh, thank you very much for being patient with me taking some time off. And like I said earlier in the show, I'm going to be taking more time off. Uh, I will be back, I promise you. It's just taking a while. Uh, episode 400 is almost done, I promise you. I will have it out soon. Uh, I know that's uh, a source of tension. It'll be out at four ninety nine, guaranteed. It'll be, it'll be out definitely before four ninety nine. Uh, shout out to the goddess who is sitting behind me, uh, calling me a malaka and folding the laundry. A uh, shout out to sweet mama D who is sitting on my lap. Hi. One, Peace. Who decided to talk? Who is sitting here wondering why if her bedtime was eight thirty? Why she's still sitting on my lap at four, uh, 8.34. Do you want to give a shout out to anybody? Scooby-Doo, Post Malone. Kiss your butt. Oh, excuse me. Hurry up. These gentlemen want to go to bed. Captain Caveman. Captain Caveman? No. Captain Underpants? He's weird. Big Cat Ernie Lad? She can't hear you, by the way. No, I actually can't. Uh. Minecraft Steve. <laughs> uh, give a shout out to Sweet Mama D because she beat Mario Maker two today. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for being patient with me. Thank you, everybody. Uh, again, I know I said it on episode four hundred. Thank you for being fans of the show and sticking through us. Uh, and uh, we're only going to get better. So thank you very much, and until next week, happy trophy hunting. Bye. You know what else is Greek? Moussaka. You want to say goodbye? Bye. Say happy trophy hunting. Happy trophy hunting.
The theme song is Venus by the band Even off their album Zenith. Permission granted by the band and 12 Stone Records. You can find them on Facebook by going to www.facebook.com slash evenphilippines. <laughs> <laughs> 